Good. All right, complex numbers. See, if you have x squared plus 2x plus, uh, say, 5 equal to 0, and you use the quadratic formula on this, x is equal to negative 2 plus minus square root of 4 minus 4 times 5 over uh, 2 times 1. That's the quadratic formula, right? Uh, and then you have negative 2 plus minus negative 16 over 2, which is negative 2 plus minus. Well, 16 is, square root of 16 is 4, but what is the square root of negative 1? That's okay. what people go as i, right? And then you divide by 2, and you get negative 1 plus minus 2i. Now, for a long time, I mean, quadratic formula was known for a long time. But whenever people ended up with a negative sign in the square root, their simple answer was that this quadratic equation doesn't have any solution. And that was how people dealt with it. Uh, only much, much later, they realized that if you just define i to be square root of negative 1 and write your number in this, write your solution in this form, despite the fact that this is a non-existent solution, you can, you can get much more insight into what, what's happening. Um, and uh, in fact, this, this complex numbers, although we call it an imaginary number, uh, it's, it's used everywhere. Uh, for example, in the electric circuits when you have capacitors and inductors and you have to talk about sinusoidal curves uh, use of the complex numbers greatly simplify their, de their uh, description. Another place is quantum mechanics. You can't do quantum mechanics without complex numbers. What else? Uh, uh, yeah, I can't think of more, but it's, it's used in many, many places. So uh, although uh, at first people were just amused, uh, I mean, these are non-existent numbers. It's just purely imaginary numbers. What use is there? But then later, uh, they realize you can use this to simplify mathematical expression in, a, in such a way that it was much more beneficial to use this. So I'm not going to, I can't really give you the, the application at this point. You will see their actual power when you get to use it in your, in your electrical engineering course or, or whatever. Uh, but but just keep in mind that we're not making up imaginary numbers and uh, doing all this math for no purpose. It, it actually has some kind of purpose in engineering and, and physics. Okay. So uh, how do you multiply such numbers? By the way, if you have negative 1 plus 2i, this part is called the in real part. And this part is called the imaginary part. And any number that, does, that has an imaginary part uh, is called a complex number. So a complex number is made up of a real number and an imaginary number. Added. Now, how, how do you multiply two imaginary numbers? You just multiply it like you would expand polynomials in algebra. So if you had negative 1 plus 2i and say 3 plus i, if you had something like this and you were asked to multiply them, you would just simply FOIL. First, outer, inner, last. And that's, uh, what is that? Uh, oh, uh, however, there's one, one difference. There's one difference. See, what is i squared? Negative one. negative 1. See, our definition of i is that it's square root of negative 1. Therefore, if you square the i, it's negative 1. So up till this part, it will be exactly like how we, you would do algebra if you instead had x instead of i. So if you know how to do negative 1 plus 2x times 3 plus x, 
you know how to do this, do it up to this part. But the only new knowledge that you need to know is this i squared uh, being negative 1. So you have to change that to negative 1. Then negative 3 plus negative 2 is negative 5. So that's what you get. And while doing that, uh, you probably noticed that I combined negative i and 6i to 5i. Uh, that's how you add imaginary numbers. So, I mean, other, other than the fact that i squared is neg negative 1, uh, all the regular rules of algebra apply, okay? If you have a complex number z, which is a plus bi, then we can define the conjugate, or sometimes more uh, appropriately called <coughs> complex conjugate, of this number as a minus bi. In other words, the imaginary part is negated while the real part is unchanged. Now, why is the conjugate of a complex number important? Well, first of all, it has the following property. If you multiply z times z bar, this is a plus bi times a minus bi. And uh, if you FOIL it, a squared minus a bi plus a bi, and then minus b i squared. These two cancel. They cancel away. And i squared, because that's negative 1, you end up with a squared plus b squared, which doesn't have any imaginary part. So it becomes a real number. Now, the property of the conjugate is important when you try to divide two numbers. Okay, so let, let's try to, to divide two numbers. Example one. Compute um, 1 plus square root 3 of i divided by <coughs> Radical 3 minus. Let's, let's try to compute this. When you divide two complex numbers, you what you want to do is you want to rationalize the denominator by multiplying the conjugate top and bottom. If you multiply the conjugate top and bottom, conjugate of the denominator top and bottom, the, because of this formula that we just did, the denominator turns into a real number. Okay. And then suddenly uh, you get something that can be simplified in a much easier way. So let's try this. So you have, since the denominator is radical 3 minus i, you multiply the conjugate. What's the conjugate of this number? Square root 3 plus 2. Square root of 3, three plus, I. plus I, right? And I'm using the property that if you have a fraction, you're allowed to multiply whatever to top and bottom as, you're, as, as long as you're multiplying the same thing. So since I'm trying, to dis I'm trying to multiply radical 3 plus I in the denominator, I should also multiply the same thing on the top, radical 3 plus I. OK, you, you can either choose to FOIL the denominator, or you can use this formula here to short, uh, shorten your calculation. Since a is square root of 3 and b is equal to 1, uh, you, can, you can just square, square the square root of 3 and square 1, and that will be your denominator. Okay, so I, I took a shortcut by using this formula which is what I suggest. But in case you forgot the formula and you don't know what to do, you can just boil it out and you will get the same exact answer. So there's no need to 
worry about whether you remember the formula or not. But I suggest that you try to remember that formula. For the top one, what do we do? We do the regular FOIL. So radical 3 plus i plus uh, radical 3 squared i. And then this times this, that's uh, radical 3i squared. Let's see. That's uh, radical 3 plus i. Radical 3 squared is 3i. <coughs> and i squared is negative 1. And radical 3 squared is 3 plus 1. And uh, what do you see? Radical 3 and minus radical 3, these two should cancel each other, right? i plus 3i is 4i, so you end up with 4i on top. After canceling these two, you get 4i on top. On, on the bottom, what do you see? 3 plus uh, 1 is 4. And 4i divided by 4 is? Okay. i. <clears throat> so we see that if you divide this number by that number, you get the number i. It, it looks kind of magical, right? I mean, how would you have suspected that this would be simplified to such a simple number? But with the help of the conjugate, complex conjugate, you greatly simplify your outcome and you get a simple answer. So that's how you, you divide. So uh, to summarize, uh, adding, subtracting, Multiplying complex numbers are easy. There's nothing to really learn other than i squared equal to negative 1. But when it comes to division, you have to use a complex conjugate. You have to multiply the top and bottom. Right. Done? I think so. OK. No. no. That's out. Huh? It's Is that still recording? Yeah, it's still recording. <laughs> Is there a recording again? Yeah, you can press again. To